In today's um, tutorial, we'll be talking about how to make online testing. So pretty much what we're doing, we're um, creating online assessments. Um, and how we're gonna do that? We're gonna do that with a program that is called Google Forms. How do you access Google Forms? Pretty simple. You go to the top, add the nine dots at your Google Apps, you click on it, and you scroll down until you find Google Forms. It's the purple one, Forms. You open it, and it's um it's we we'll start with general information, or they give me some examples that you can use. But um, in this case, what we'll do, we'll start from making a blank quiz. The first thing we'll do once we open the quiz is always put the name first. So let's say if this is the test on um, social social skills. For example, then that automatically becomes the title here. Okay. All right. But before we get into building the test, we're going to start with the outside of the test. So let's create the, the design of the test. So first of all, we'll say, okay, I want my background to be green. Or even if I say I can I want to choose a header, I click on it and I have different options to choose from. I have different teams that I can upload. Um, I can upload my own pictures if I like. Let's take the soccer field. And I'm gonna insert it. And then that becomes the picture to the top. So now it's starting to form my test. Okay, so now the first thing what we're gonna do now, after we done insert the header, we're gonna give it a title. If you want, we can give a slight description um, in what to do. So let's say, for example, um, answer, Answer all the questions and um, let's say um, answer all the questions. Take your time. Take your time and read your work um, carefully. I'm just putting some stuff here, right? but you give them whatever you wanna add in the beginning, you can add that there. Now we're gonna go with adding questions to our test. How do we actually start to build our test? On the right here, you see this bar? This bar is gonna always be here with you. Anytime you scroll down, the bar moves along with you, so you will always have options. The first one is to add a question, add a question. Once you click on it, you can see a question would pop up here. But when we started the test, it already started with the original question. So I'm going to just take this one out. So we don't get confused. So the first question that we have here, it's the option that we have is a multiple option. But that is if we want that option. We can choose various options. We can choose between a shorter option or given a paragraph, a checkbox jump, um, if you want to upload a file. You know, so whatever way, even if you want to import a date or a time into the test, and this is where you can easily build and create um, every, create all the questions and designs for your test. I'm gonna say, um, why is listening, why is listening, oh, sorry, why is listening, important now i can say for a question like this you know what i want a short answer but then i can say you know so let's say oh better yet um i'll put here um give me your opinion that's what i put here so then they have a short answer but let's say for example if this is a question that i really i want to reuse i can easily go to the bottom and click duplicate and then I would duplicate the same question and then I can, um, you know, I have the same question, I can um, adjust it or do whatever I want with it. And then please forgive me for the breeze. All right, if I want to delete a question right next door, right next to it have required. This is a very uh, important option because this gives you the option to, um, this gives you the option to, let's say if the student um, to click, if you click it on, which means that the student would not 
be able to submit their test unless they answered those questions unless that particular question and those questions that you click required on are there if if not then the students would then be allowed to leave a question open okay so we're going to duplicate this question but now i'm saying i want it to be multiple choice then here comes my options why is listening important i'm going to just choose um, um answer number one that is that answer. Answer number two is that answer. And answer number three is this answer. Now, the three options that I give. But let's say if there's a point where I'm saying, you know what, I want the student to give their opinion, or if there's another answer out of one, two, and three that they find, hey, it's also relevant, you know, depending on my test question, I can, to the bottom here, have add option. I can add an extra option, number four. Or I can easily say no other. Other meaning that um, it would just be seen as other, so then they would know to put in their opinion there. If I want to get rid of an option, to delete an option, at the end, in, right here, you've seen the X. These crosses can, once you click on it, I'll click on the four, and I'll get rid of the four. OK? Let's see what other type of questions they have. I'm sorry, over here. So we're going to try to add another question. And let's see the question we had, what color is the sky? Let's choose that one, right? Um, let's see with a question like that, and let's see if we do the checkbox. And I'm going to put red, blue, and I'm going to say green. Now, what I want to show you is... If I like, oh boy, the breeze is very high. If I would like to include a picture, if I would like to include a picture or add an image, I can easily do that here. So I can just click here, and then it gives you the option to upload a image from your computer or whatnot. But you can also get a picture from the drive. So let's say if I put um, sky color, and let's see what comes up. Okay, I'm gonna, oh, this one looks nice. So let's say I insert this one here. So then for each of my options, I can include a color. However, I decide here, and I know I skipped these two, but I'll come back to them. Right here, I have another add image, but I'll show you the difference between this one over here with add image which is in multiple choice and the checkbox question, and this image. Once I click image here, and let me put red sky. Okay, perfect. Oh, this one looks nice. So what happened now is the image actually came in. I can take the image and move it to the top and move this image. I can actually take this image, copy it, and put it to the top of the question. I'll better yet, um, what color is the sky now? I can include an image and then have the student then give their answer according to what the, um, according to what I would want them to answer with, with regards to the image. Yeah. Okay, um, let's continue. I'm gonna take this out. We don't need that anymore. Um, import questions. Import question is pretty um, handy because um, this allows us the opportunity to import a question out of a previous test. So let's say if I open import question, um, let's say if I take this one, this one is called assessment. I click select. Then on the side here, you're seeing these are all the questions that my test, my previous test consists of. So I can easily click on it and then click import and then it will be automatically imported into, into my test. Um, let, let me just give a good example, just so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, this is the one I was playing with, testing one, two, and then, I'm going to include 
this question. Take a look at the image and answer the following questions. Okay, once I click import, and then here you have the one that I did in a previous test. Take a look at the image and answer the following question. So the image is here. And then for example, I can say, I can add a new question. Put it up here, it actually went down. New question, multiple choice. What color is the sky? And then we have red, blue, green. Yeah. And then the student would then, they can actually take a look at an image and I can refer all my questions that has to do with the image. I can refer it to, um, to the image now under this, under the image itself. So all the following questions can be referred to, uh, can refer, can refer to the image. Um, next, you have add a title. Add a title is pretty much like at the top here, we have the title bar, test social skills. But if we wanted to add another title, let's say uh, between here. Okay, if I click add title, where did it go? Okay, here it is. It went to the top. It shouldn't be here, but we can easily move things around. That is a good part. You can move things around. So I can put that as a title here, and I'll put um, um, sky color. That's the name of uh, the title. And then they know, hey, this is, the, this is the on the web or the topic or the chapter that we're on. Um, and your, your questions can be referred to. You can give a description here as well. So that is adding a title. I just mentioned about um, adding an image. Of course, if I want to add a video, I can easily do that here. But then the most interesting one is add a section. This is pretty interesting. Um, what, is, what is adding a section or why is adding a section important? Um, a section actually breaks down or breaks up your test in smaller pieces. So let's say if your test consists of 18 questions, it might be an idea to say section one, consists out of uh, six questions, section two, six, and section three, six, you know, that it doesn't be too long. Um, and when you break it up like that, then the student or whoever's filling out the the, um, the test, uh, if it's, even if it's a survey, it would give them that sort of feeling of, oh, I'm almost finished. So, so it's, it's pretty handy. How do we work with adding a section? Let's click on adding a section. You notice now it will have section two of two, and at the top up here, we have section one of two. If I click, um, I'm gonna click add section again, you notice it turned to one of three. So I've included other sections. Okay, this is section two and this is section three. So let's say if I want to talk about in section two, I'm gonna talk about um, hearing versus listening. Here I can be, here I can include all questions with regard to hearing versus listening. If uh, section three is considered to be, um, um, I'll just call it your opinion, then everything related to their opinion can be placed to the bottom here, right? So what we've done is we've divided the test into sections. We're gonna go back to the top of the test. So now we pretty much ran through these options, the task bar on the side here with all the different options. Let me see if I missed anything. Um, oh, I didn't mention this. What is pretty handy when it comes to multiple choice questions, you can also move the options. So let's say I can put blue to the top. If I wanna put green here, I can also move them around in that way as well. So this is pretty much you building your test. Um, if you want to view how it looks so far, you have the preview button. You click on preview, and you can actually take a look at what the test look like so far, what the student would have to fill in. Notice it have next, and this next only came in because we have section. So once I click it, it actually takes me to the second section. Oh, but because these questions are required to answer, it would not allow me to go to the second section. 
now that I put in an answer for them, I'm over to the second section. And I didn't put those as required to answer, so I don't have to answer them. And then this is for the third question, and then I can click submit. Um, however, if if you have to remember though that um, Google Form is a live, it's, it's always live. So if you have to click submit now, unless if you're doing a survey, for example, it would already start to record, hey, you have one submission already, and you can't undo that. Right, so um, if even if it's a test, you can click submit and then you can play with it. That's not a problem. So it's up to you if you want to click submit now, but be careful because it's live. It continues to um, add up. So let's go back, and we're gonna go back to the beginning of the test. Okay, so this is it here. That was the preview. Next to the preview at the top, we have the settings gear. This is pretty interesting. If you want to collect email addresses from the student, um, you click this, and then they, you'd, they would be um, up to put in an email address in the field. But it's not fully necessary because the student will already be logging in via their email. So it, it's when you send them a, the quiz, um, due to the fact that we're all at soberschools.sx, they will be uh, responding and you will notice their um, um, ID. Uh, required sign-in. So, of course, always keep this checked, which means that once you're part of the SOBA organization, then you can participate in uh, the test. And you can say, I'm going to limit the students to only one respond, which means once they submit or click submit, they cannot go and undo or redo anything that you've already done. Um, you can give them the options to um, edit after submission, but of course that's what we're talking about. We don't want them to do that. If you want them to use that, it's up to you. And see summary of chart and text, that is then up to you. The next tab is presentation. It has show a progress bar. The progress bar is actually counting. Uh, you would notice, if, let's say for example, I have three sections. So once I go to section two, this progress bar would show, okay, now I'm this far away from the finish line. And once I go to section three, it'll show me that I'm two thirds away from the finish line, for example. Ha, if you wanna shuffle the questions in a test, you click here. This will shuffle all the questions in a test. However, however, I'm going to come out of this for one second. I didn't mention this earlier. However, let's take, for example, if I have multiple choice, where I have blue, green, or red, if I go to the bottom here, I also have shuffle order, option order. By clicking this, it changes the option, the, the order here. So. If you have, if you assign tests to students and you click shuffle the questions, first thing that will be shuffled are the questions. But if you add individual questions at, um, if you, um, I'm sorry, not at individual question. If you add each separate question, if you click the option to shuffle option order and it's multiple choice, it will also shuffle the multiple choice order. So uh, you get double the power. Or right there. So let's get back to the settings tab. We were at presentation and we said, yes, we're going to shuffle the order. Now we can include the, the, the progress bar. Okay, show link to other, um, show link to submit another response. Uh, not necessary. Okay, so then we have no confirmation message. This is at the ending of the test, what would the student read? What message would you leave or if you choose to leave a message for the student? So for example, if you want to say, thank you for taking the test. Uh, see you all next week. And uh -huh, let's say, don't forget to read chapter five and six i'm just saying some stuff right so once the test has been once the test is finished then this is a message that would pop up for the students so then they would know what else to do all uh, right click save to apply to those changes i'm going to go back to settings and the last one is quizzes of course you want to click make this a quiz assign point values so you would give the um, point values to each question 
question. I didn't do that earlier, so we'll go back to that in a second. Um, release grade immediately. So these are things you can just go through them. If you want to have the part of the settings, um, you do that. I'm going to go back to show you how to add point values. So let's take, for example, this question, or better yet, this one here. What is the color of the sky? If I go here in applying the answer key now, at the bottom of each question, you'll see the option to include the answer key. Let's say if the answer, the answer is blue, and I can also say how many points I'm going to award for that question. And then I click Done. And that becomes then the answer key. And to the bottom, you'll see that um, the student can receive five points. I can go to another question. And at the end of it, at the bottom of it, you'll see the answer key as well. Um, since this is a, if it's a um, short answer question, um, I can also put the answer. But of course, short answers come with their opinion. So it, it, it's up to you. You have to be very careful with what you're doing, how you're doing this. But always remember to add the point value. That makes it easier to at the end when it's time to correct the test. Uh, you're not doing the correcting. The computer will be doing the correcting, at least for the multiple choice ones. But when it comes to the open questions, you'll be then up to read those responses from the student and um, grade it correct or not. And then the point value, would then, the, the grade would then be tallied to the student total grade. Okay, and the last part of um, uh, the last part of the Google form is next to the question tab. You have the responses tab. Once you once you click send, the assignment will be sent to the different um, will be sent to all the participants or whoever is taking a test or if it's a survey or whatever you do it. Once you click send and you include their ad, let's see if I click send. I can um, include the email addresses, or I can say, you know what, I'm going to take the link. I can either shorten the link, shorten the link just by clicking here. I can take this link, copy it. And let's take, for example, I can go into, um, let's say if I go into Google Classroom, I can take this link and automatically paste it in my Google Classroom as well. It's taking pretty long to open up. Yes, there you go. I can take it and paste it in my Google, cla Google um, Classroom. And then the student would automatically have the link right there to, um, to follow the, to, to take the test, right? So that is by me copying the link here. Okay, let's X that, we're not sending it out, so. Double check if I missed anything. No, okay. Uh, yeah, if I want to invite collaborators, persons to, um, yeah, I can also invite persons here as well. If I miss someone, uh, let's say after posting in the Google Classroom, if there's another student, I don't just saying something. You can just add anyone else here if you like. So that is, that is to your, um, you have that there as an option as well. And um, like I was saying, once you click responses, you will see the amount, you will see all the responses that has been submitted to you there. I'm going to try to find an example. Oof. Let's see if I can open this one and see. Let me see if I have any responses in this one to give an example of how the responses would look. Um, no. OK, so with this one, I'm going to actually, oh, darn. Um, let's see how's the best way to go about this video. Should I send it? Um, okay, what I'll do, I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send it, and in a second short video, I'm gonna show you how the response look at that in that one. Okay, all right. So, so 